Blake's Buzz Live. Buzz, 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 buzz. Hey, Buzz Buzz Babies, it is Friday. Thank God. What a week. I feel like, aren't they all though? Aren't all the weeks just a week? Anyway, it's over. It's Friday. And I got some cool guests coming on the show tonight. We're going to talk about some very cool comics. And I'm going to introduce you to some very, very cool people. It is Ahoy's five-year anniversary. If you guys aren't reading Ahoy comics, you're you're silly little gooses and you need to get your you need to start waddling to the comic book store or to your favorite book dealer right now and order some. I've got a couple rock stars from over there. I've got artist Jamal Eigel and I have got the lead honcho head guy. I don't know what his official title is, but Tom Pyers in the house. Like I these two guys are responsible for so many cool comics and I'm I'm so privileged to have you both on my show. How are you both doing tonight? Hey, Blake. Thanks for that nice intro. I'm doing well. I, I'm good. I'm good. As far as Tom's official title, I usually just refer to him as El Jefe. So. <laughs> that works. That works. Uh, the, is, I've, a lot of people talk about his hair. I've, I've noticed he's he's got like he's got like the biggest hair in comics, or he's he's, he's it, it's it is one of the finest heads of hair that I have seen <laughs> in my entire life, and it's. Thank you very much. It's tied back now. There is a lot of it. And I will cut it when Trump's in jail. <laughs> nice. Are you, uh, cut it and donate it? <laughs> I'll send it to him. <laughs> yes. He can make a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that would be what, what a great, what a great gift. Just a massive mound of hair to get. Uh Okay, I got it. I got, I'm segueing into a story. So I used to be in love with this. My dad was a bartender when I was younger. That's and that's how I fell into the service industry. I, he used to work with this waitress named Molly. I was I was in love with her. She read cool books. Like she would give me cool books to read. She introduced me to Charles Bukowski. Right. Like I mean, like just like very very cool lady. Uh, we 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 hung out for a, a little bit and ended up just being friends. And she used to she used to date this guy who was a giant turd, guys. And he but he had all this hair. And they finally broke up one day, and everybody was like super happy about it. And I guess he had, he had like cut his hair like right before they broke up. And so we go over there to like cheer her up, and she's got this bag of hair, and she's just like picking it up and letting it like fall through her fingers and i was like this is fucking weird like we got to drink we got to get a bottle of jameson or something like you can't just sit here and play with somebody's hair all night uh anyways so that now i'm now i'm now i'm replacing that sad image of like a happy one with with trump just sitting <laughs> in, in his prison oranges just like letting <sighs> tom's hair trickle through his fingers you, you've reached my happy place blake <laughs> You guys didn't think that's what we'd be talking about. <laughs> now, if this were a different show, I might have to say I'm growing my hair till Hunter Biden's in jail. Oh, shit. oh man, you're never gonna, you're never gonna get rid of it. Then. <laughs> but no, I, I will send this hair to Trump and say this is there's this much hair because I just couldn't stand the thought of you being free. <laughs> It's 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 sad. It's uh, I I hate the I hate the notion that like the rich can just get away with anything. And I think the reason I really hate it is because I'm I'm not rich and I'm never gonna be. And it's just like I deserve like we all deserve some of those perks, right? If you get them, we should all get them, right? Just like, right. Just like if you're not gonna tax the church, you shouldn't tax me. That's fair. Like I. We're going to get political tonight, guys. It's going to get weird. <laughs> you're, you're right, Blake. If I were rich, it would be a great system. <laughs> right? I, would, I would feel differently about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, these two guys are responsible for a very, very cool comic. And uh, it's it's called The Wrong Earth. And, you know, over and over, and I'm sure you guys have heard it, too. 
people like advise people not to go into indie comics and do superhero books right they're like and and like in right now in the kickstarter boom like people were you know they're like i mean it's a cool idea but like it's it's a hard market it's a hard market if you don't have that you know big two or big three moniker on your on your corner box right like uh and and you guys have found Actually, not not just with the wrong Earth, but you found other superhero success at at Ahoy Comics uh, that you guys continuously put out. But you know, this was one of the launching titles at at Ahoy, right? Like, right. You, and you guys you guys have been on this book together, other than the one shots that you kind of people work on. But you right. guys worked on this like the whole time. Correct? Yeah, right. so a couple couple projects where we weren't together, but yes, yes, the the main line. What happens next? Raw Earth series has has always been me and Jamal. Nice. So how did how did that like how did that come to be, and how did it come to be like one of the that, like the that was the main launch title for Ahoy, correct? Like I mean that was that was the flagship. Yeah, yeah. We launched with like four titles, and that was the right. first one that came out. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it was a, it was a Wrong Earth, a High Heaven, Bronze Age Boogie. And no. was it no? Was it Bronze Age Boogie? No, it was Captain Ginger. Oh, that's right. That's right. Captain Ginger. Captain Ginger. Oh, and which is yeah. coming back. And yes, oh. or is back now. Came out this week. Back. Right. Right. Well, part right. of the we're having our fifth anniversary, so we decided to um, sort of uh, relive the glory days of fall 2018 and put out a little bit of Ron Earth and a little bit of Captain Ginger. Nice. The, the, the before times before before, times. before masks and spit tests and and we you couldn't know, spit, we just remember we could just run around and spit in each other's mouths and and just have like the best times with no consequences right. in a way yeah. five years doesn't seem like a tremendously long amount of time to celebrate a history but this five years was yeah lasted such a long time <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's like a 10 year anniversary wrapped up in five yeah, yeah. but also like you know you guys um you guys stood tall like in the field of, of indie comics and boutique publishers when a lot of people were having problems uh when a lot of books weren't coming out when there's a lot of people were stressing you know i don't want to like call out names and stuff but it was it was a it was a tumultuous time for a bit for for indie comics like with the pandemic after the pandemic and then and then recently again like there's you know there's just stuff happening and and, and you guys always managed to to stand above all that and you know you 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 put out just enough books and had you know just enough selection and and a, a variety but you, but you knew you know you knew like when to pick up more titles and when to stay with what you got and it you know you you just like had that figured out um it, but like what was what was the seek other other than just being maybe a little bit more conservative with with books you guys signed but like what was the secret of of this hard five years of survival well, the lord watches over fools and drunks like it's like that he does <laughs> um uh, we have a great crew assembled of people who worked hard to get the books out um we have a, a terrific publisher who's who found some uh, and always somehow manages to find money that we can use. And um, we have, uh, uh, I don't know, just uh, uh, we just want to keep going. We don't want to stop doing this because we like it. And uh, I, don't know what, I don't know what we would do next, <laughs> frankly. But so as long as we're able, we, there were a lot of, you know, I mean, we had no distributor for a while during the pandemic. There were so many stores that were closed. Mm -hmm. It was, it was hard. I think the second series of Captain Ginger, we had to, we had to finish that out digitally because there was nowhere to send copies. Oh wow! And um, uh, of course, it ended up in a, in a paper, you know, trade paperback edition. So, so that was all right. But. Uh, um, we have a we just have a cool team we get together every week and talk about what is the latest challenge that wants to obliterate us and we try to figure out our way around it together nice and hey, jamal how did how did you i mean other than just like slaying 
every fucking panel you draw because i mean you're like your resume your resume and style like all, it all speaks for itself and it's like yeah duh they would hire you but like how did how did how did you get um on board this this ahoy train and um i mean i, I they must they must treat you pretty well and it'd be a good place to work right because you're, you're you're still there and still have a smile on your face it, it seems so um well how- <laughs> well like what honestly happened was i woke up in the cargo hold of this ship <laughs> somebody handed me a bucket and a mop and said get the scrubbing and i've, I've been here ever since no uh <laughs> my, the, the way that i entered the picture was uh through Stuart moore who you know of course is the writer of captain ginger and the aforementioned bronze age boogie um we Stuart and i worked together at dc on firestorm and nuclear man and had a great time and stayed friends afterwards for years and years and we'd live in the, in the same area and we run into each other so there's this pie place called 420 blackbirds which is like two blocks away from my house okay so i'm walking past just as Stuart's walking out and Stuart says hey tom pyre would look would like to talk to you about this project that he has in mind and you know i i've said this in front of tom before so it's not you know a big secret but that's sort of like that was like one of those like hey he's in the bucket list (laughs) (laughs) he's in the bucket list of people that you like and you would love to work with at some point so uh so yeah so i said yeah get, let tom give me a call tom called me up we talked a little bit he told me to pitch for the series and it was like it was a light bulb moment it was basically like shit why didn't i think of this and yes i would i i would love to do it so so that's how i got involved and then actually i was just about to go on vacation to tokyo for three weeks oh wow so I'm sending Tom sketches. I'm like taking photos of like from my sketchbook and sending Tom sketches and we're trading emails back and forth. And because uh, originally the characters were supposed to be uh, dog themed heroes. Really? And yes. And, I, and yeah. And I, uh, I had made the suggestion to Tom because uh, my friend Vidal Del Sante has a character called Stray, which is also like a dog theme vigilante book i didn't want to like tread on his toes so while i was in japan one of the things in japanese culture is that the dragonfly represents strength and nobility and gracefulness so and there's you know dragonflies all over japanese like samurai armor and liter and artwork and statues and there's dragonflies everywhere you know, I, yeah, I mean, it's starting to sound like my like Bruce Wayne, you know, back crashing through the window kind of <laughs> kind of moment. But you know, so I'm telling Tom this as we're like trading emails back and forth, and Tom goes, "Oh, really?" Because you know, in Europe, dragonflies are considered the emissaries of the devil. Like the, they're literally called like you know the eye sticker. Yeah. Oh wow. So that was like that was like boom. We've got. We've got our our hero. We've got our theme. We've got Dragonfly, Dragonfly Man. Yep. So and then everything everything else just kind of came together after that. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the 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 layers of Wrong Earth. Right. You you guys take these these tropes that we've seen a lot before and do a totally because of how everything comes together it's this very unique and fresh spin on them right like like right. the the multiverse we've we've seen it before and, we, and we've seen like evil versions of of characters but uh, or or different more intense versions right and the the way that you've like brought them together and it's very interesting because you have like you have like the modern superhero and then you have like you have like golden age like like right. good boy scout good boy superhero right and and right. how they how they interact it's like it's like christian bale and adam west right are like both in this in this comic like interacting with each other in in very interesting what never boring ways and and then how you you build on that with the the villainy and and their and the right. cast and stuff too it's so smart and has proven very successful like i mean you guys are now in spinoff territory uh and then and then the the last big uh was it last year 
or the, or two, or the year before, like the, all those one shots, you got like Gail Simone, you got yeah. Mark Wade, you got like yep. all these like no names to write for you. Uh, these... <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt sorry for them. Oh. <laughs> Never. They bring the, they bring they bring that all upon themselves. No, no I'm kidding. Uh, but that, what was that like to to see this this thing that that you guys made and and, and not only did it is it you know is it is it successful it's still going it's still being read it's still being covered right. and talked about and then and then you have like rock star icons of the industry that are like hey let us let us play around in your sandbox like was it and though it was exciting were you guys nervous because were you like what are they going to do to my babies they're mine i don't care what you wrote before <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not i mean i know for myself as a reader like I was excited to to see what they were going to do, and everybody brought something something different and unique to to the project, except for Mark Wade and Leonard Kirk, because Mark Wade and Leonard Kirk basically came in and said, "We're going to do this better than you guys did." <laughs> oh no! Yeah. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> yeah well the the wonderful thing about it, it i come from like a time when there's uh this guy bob haney who used to write this comic brave and the bold that had batman and a different dc superhero teaming up every month and the the thing about bob haney is that he didn't read other comics apparently and he just he just if you were, if you, if Bob Haney was writing you, you were in the Bob Haney verse. You were not in the DC universe. Right. Mm. And so that, that's been an inspiration to us. And um, so if they did do something like fantastically worse or better than what we do, then we could just ignore it forever. But, you know, <laughs> but that, you know, you were talking about how uh, uh, people tell indie comics creators not to do superheroes in the indie market but i think the thing uh you can't do because you'll never be able to compete with dc and marvel is a superhero universe okay but if you want to tell superhero stories um i think you it can be a great advantage to be in the indie market because you can really put a different spin on them and you your story is not going to be interrupted by a crossover in part six yeah and um uh, and you don't, you can, like, if you want to send your characters to Vegas, it doesn't matter if Vegas was destroyed last month in another comic. It shouldn't, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I I think, I think in the indie field is a great place to do superheroes. And if, if you want to do, like, a cohesive universe, I think you really ought to be at the big two. Okay. That, well, that, that makes more sense. And, and I mean, especially if you look at like Kickstarter markets too, and like, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're like, you know, slow down, bud, like it's, it's your first Kickstarter campaign. You're, you're talking like tied multiverse and like, like let's shrink it, shrink it down and, and focus for a moment. Uh, but that, that is a different way to, to stand out. And, and I feel like, I feel like that's the natural progression of superhero titles though. Cause it's like, if you write one good one and then you're like, Oh, well they, we need to inhabit this world with other superheroes instead of like maybe just focusing on that, on that initial creation maybe. And, and you guys have added characters and expanded upon your original mythos. Right. But right. you, you still keep it pretty tight. And, yeah. and I really appreciate that. And it's, is that is that hard to do like do you have to like like bring yourself in uh like and, and like do you like oh this idea is too big and like it's you know like do, it just seems like you guys are really smart in your decision making with with this narrative and it makes like i don't know it's it just feels it feels tighter and more efficient than a lot of like big two heroics that that I read too. And it's, it's easier to follow. It's easier to pick up. Like you said, there's no, there's no tie in interruptions and big summer events and stuff too, which helps. Um, but it, but it's also like your, your structure and decision-making and, and how you guys have planned this out. Uh, so like, is it, is, is it ever, a is it, do you guys struggle with that or does it, is, is it pretty like, like you're like, no, we figured, we figured out our formula and stuck with it and we're geniuses. And that's why we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> 
the thing for me is to just try not to let it stray too far too long from those two main characters. Okay. Who I think are really, I'm interested in them. Mm-hmm. There's sort of the contrast between these two characters is, is the fuel for the whole project. Right. Okay. But I also think personally, like the similarities between the two, you know, make it even strong. I mean, you can contrast where they are, you know, where they are very different. You know, both both versions of Richard's fame are very different from one another. But you know, there's a there is a a self assured smugness to Dragonfly Man that I like drawing out, you know, nice. visually. And I think it's kind of the same, like, you know, Dragonfly has those moments as well where, you know, he likes to think that he's the smartest guy in the room. Totally, you know? totally, totally. And I, I think I think there's a core decency to both of them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, they, it's just, it's just how they them. reach it. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> they express it in, in, in a way, in ways that conflict with each other. But but you, you hit, when we were talking about it early on, you hit, the nail on the head, Jamal, which is not that, not that dragonfly, the the sort of uh, you know grim and gritty version. It's not that he's like mean or turning evil or anything. He's just really tired. Yeah, that that was yeah that was something that, that was something that you know in my you know initial design and in like the first few pages that I was drawing dragonfly, like I wanted to get across the idea that this is a guy who's been at war mm-hmm. for years. You know, he's he's lost his sidekick. He's, you know, just, he's been fighting at this point, number one for years and years and years. He's getting his ass kicked by, you know, you know, fetish wearing goons, you know, <laughs> with like baseball bats and brass knuckles. And he just doesn't give a shit. Like it, it's about efficiency. You know? Yes, yes. And he said tragedy. And um, uh, but one thing I try not to hit too hard, uh, but but I like to have it in there is that is that Dragonfly's exposure to Earth Alpha, which is the Silver Age Code approved world, is slowly making his life better. <laughs> He's really he really kind of loves the place. Mm-hmm. He, he has a hard time respecting everyone there, but it, it's just it was just such a relief for him to to be uh, fighting bad guys who were not either like at the core of the government and the police or like super sadistic and, and horrific. Just the stakes were so much lower. I think he I think it has been a bit of a furlough for him. Interesting. Because I can kind of feel that guilt too sometimes. Like he's, you know, like he, like he, like he feels bad for like being content. But oh, I always feel bad for feeling good. Yes. Yeah. That's is that is that just like a normal hero? That like that 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 no hero can escape. Really? Is that's, it like that's autobiography? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is that a like so like I. I was, we were talking about this on, on a show the other night and I was, I was talking about how like, you know, even I'm, I'm 38 years old and I can't, I will never be able to escape like that Catholic guilt that I was raised with, even though like, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that anymore and yeah. stuff. And it, and, and it, and I feel like, um, I, I've seen that in like a lot of superheroes too. And it's, it's like a form of Catholic guilt though, but it's like, you know, like we're not, we're not allowed to be happy. You know, Superman's not allowed to get married or go down on women and like, you know, all these weird things that like, that make people happy that are, you're not allowed to do. Right. And, but the, it, that seems to be like a, I, I don't, I'm trying, I'm like thinking, and I don't know that I've ever seen a superhero not have that, like that, that that's like this necessary element to their core that propels them to do what they do, which also like leads them to like never be happy or never to Let's- allow themselves to feel happy. You don't want to just sit around being happy while somebody out there needs you, right? Hmm. Um, I mean, that's what Spider-Man is, isn't it? 
So is that is that is that why he's like, even though he's like a legit hero, like Spider Man's always kind of the joke because he he lets himself be more human than the other guys do, maybe. No, well, there's a lot to Spider Man. He's such a great character, and it's it's uh, like Mark Wade sort of put it succinctly, which is that when Spidey wins, Peter loses. When Peter wins, Spidey loses. Mm. Every time, and that's how you write him. And I think that's true. Um, but it is all about you know if he had if he hadn't been enjoying life instead of capturing the burglar, his his uncle would still be alive. So yeah. mm. that's propelled him for the rest of his life. Hmm. And then you guys have like at at Ahoy, you you know you have like other there's a, there's some other superhero shenanigans going down too. Um, <laughs> with, yeah, and and uh, which the trade volume three trade just came out the, the, either this week or next week or around this time. Um, yeah. The collections out, uh, but I remember, I remember when that was all going down, and I remember like when DC picked it up. And then DC was like, no, we don't have the guts to put this out. Just kidding. And then <laughs> like, and then, uh, and that's how I heard about Ahoy was, was through that, that, cause you, I mean, you guys were all over the press, like Ahoy picks up this, this, you know, comic with Jesus in it. And that take that DC was sca- like, you know, all these big headlines. And, um, uh, but did you guys know, like, did you guys know your, was that like a strategic deal? Like, cause you had so much free publicity by picking up that title. I mean, you still did PR and stuff too, but it was just like, did you guys know that that was going to be so active in, in the headlines when you, when the publisher picked that up or did that kind of shock you guys? It, it was actually more so when it was at DC because there was a, uh, a religious group put out a petition against it. When they okay. Were, because the, the greatest, you know, the, the, the greatest, uh, the worst, menace you have to take care of in the world is books you haven't read you couldn't have possibly read so they must mm. be because they're not even finished yet i mean these okay. people are they were just using it for publicity but anyway they got like a hundred thousand signatures on this petition oh wow to tell dc not to come out with second coming which is not the reason dc didn't come out with second coming um uh they and mark russell the writer creator with Richard Pace, um, mutually decided that if it stayed at DC, the story was going to have to make too many compromises. Oh. DC's not only a big company in the public eye, which limits what it can do, but it, but it's also part of a conglomerate, which limits what it can do. Okay. So. Um, uh, we found out that they were that they had amicably agreed to uh, place this somewhere else, and uh, we just wanted it so bad. It went out for a few weeks, and I, I couldn't even sleep. I wanted this book so bad because just be, creatively, it was just such a beautiful comic, mm-hmm. and I thought it might get get us some notoriety. I think it I think it got us less than I was hoping for because once it left DC, the People who put out the ten thousand signature petition or hundred thousand signature petition forgot about it. Uh, and another group picked it up and they got like the and they even put my name in the body of the petition. I was so proud. <laughs> First thing you should be against, but it got so few signatures. I just wanted to die. <laughs> oh anyway, it's a we were so happy to get it, and DC was. Uh, so helpful sending over files and cool logos and all this stuff it was they were great they were just great to us nice jamal do you ever like because i mean you've you've been in the indie world for a while now like you ever you ever think about going back to the the more corporate side of uh, uh, comics like i mean because you did you did some cool work you know like and and you're doing great work now like I, i don't like don't get me wrong at all but um you know, it's just, it's, it, it, it this interests me because I talked to a lot of Kickstarter guys, right? And right. that's how my platform like started because I was, I, I was interviewing Kickstarter people and trying to, you know, promote Kickstarter books. And then, and then like I started talking to like bigger indie people and then, and then got to talking to like some, you know, had some big two guests. And, right. And, but it, it started with Kickstarter and I'll always have like a 
very warm place in my heart for for crowdfunding. But that's like the dream, right? When you talk to them, they're like, "Yeah, we want to. Like, we're gonna we want to make these comics. We're gonna pitch them to a publisher, and then we want to end up at DC." And so it's always it always intrigues me when when some people get that, and then maybe it's maybe it's not what you wanted. Maybe it's maybe it was different than you thought, or or you you like you found a project you were more passionate about, you know, and and it, and it ended up being lucrative, and you stuck with it. But you know, like. Are you ever in talks with anyone or anyone try, ever trying to get you to like go go back to big two work or, or are you are you like no like I'm I'm at Ahoy they know I'm at Ahoy and- um, <laughs> Okay so I have to I have to preface this with the the fact that I started working in a capacity as an intern at DC in 1989 and worked for them for most of the for most of my career up until about 2012 so i had you know a good 20 year run you know yeah primarily working for dc even when i was you know even before because i was on contract there for seven years okay and even before that i did the bulk of my freelance work for dc so I had that run. I had that time. And I've done things for DC, like small bits of things I did. I've done some covers. I did some stuff, mostly from Milestone recently. I, okay. Um, and I have gotten offers to do things over at DC, you know, miniseries, that kind of thing. But, you know, I have a, you know, I have a calculus that I go by and that's kind of worked for me. Um, Especially once I started doing a lot more independent work. Okay. It has to be fun. And I have to be able to, it has to be something that I can't say no to Mm -hmm. both emotionally and financially. Okay. Um, So you have those three things. So, I, it has to reach two of the three. Okay. If it's if it's all three, then I'm going to stick with it. You know, and with you know with the wrong earth, it's all three. Yeah. Nice. Um. But you know, since the, you know since I left DC in twenty in twenty twelve, like I've just you know I like doing weird stuff. I like doing stuff that I would not have thought of on my own. I, you know, okay. the only real legacy that you have as a creator in this business is to create things that you have a stake in, like, you know, something that you can leave your mark on. DC and Marvel are great, you know, at what they do, but what they do is brand management more than anything else. Hmm. You know, these are heritage brands. You are linking a very long chain dating back to the 1930s. You know, there will be people who come behind you who will do great work. There will be people who come behind them who do great work. But, you know, you're, you know, I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, there are a lot of people who's, who still think of the work that I did at DC fondly, you know? Yeah. Um, but if I had stayed at DC, I wouldn't get to do Ahoy, stuff for Ahoy. I wouldn't get to do the stuff I did with Scott Snyder over at Comicsology. I wouldn't mm-hmm. have gotten to draw the Terminator. I wouldn't have gotten to do two issues of a Kiss story with, you know, the band and set in the 1930s in Chicago fighting demons. You know, I, you know, I, you know, I got to go back to do GI Joe for a bit. I, you know, I've, I've had so many opportunities to do different things. Nice. And I, and I know, you know, working with Tom, A, I'm never going to be bored. <laughs> you know, and whenever Tom and I talk, it's, he just leaves me in stitches because he's just hysterical. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but I think part of the reason why the wrong earth works so well is that, you know, Tom and I have very similar sensibilities about things, about, about story, story structure, about comedy, you know, the, the things that we're trying to bring into the book, you know, love of old comic books and classic television and everything else. So, you know, 
So all of those, I think all those things combined just made, has made it such a, a, a great experience for me. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot to be said about the team at Ahoy. And there's a lot to be said about the support that the publisher gives us. You know, absolutely. Like, you know, it's just, nice. I, I, it's really, it's literally been one of the best working experiences I've had with any publisher, like ever in a you know 30 plus year career wow. so you know and I've, and I've said to tom before as long as they will have me you know i will yeah, i will good. stay involved with ahoy comics no, we will have you <laughs> uh, one thing about it, I, I to the still i look at a wrong earth comic that jamal and uh, juan castro our anchor did and it's the energy is like i would i I, I always tell you, you're like George on Titans. Yeah. Like, wow. The sheer level of commitment and energy and interest he has in this project reminds me of that every time. That is the that is that, the compliment that, of compliments. That's, I know, an, that's, I, and, that's high praise. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's really high praise. Actually, Don't you feel it when, you, when you're when you working at it? I mean, well, you I mean, it? you... Dude, you know me. You, I put a hundred percent into everything. So, and you know the level of like research that I've done to kind of fle to yeah. just flesh out these worlds. A little. Like my, I was explaining to because I teach at the School of Visual Arts in New York, and I was cool. explaining to my students that you know my reference file for the wrong Earth is something like forty three gigs. <laughs> like it's it's yeah. it's ridiculous like how how much reference material i have for this book. oh right wow. you were looking uh, you were looking at concept cars for the yeah the dragon flyman's car yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow and you ended you ended up using one yeah i did I, I used an old nissan concept car for the dragon wagon yeah and i even went so far to have a, a sketchup model built of it for me to use so oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh what how do you uh how do you organize a, a database like that like what do you like do you just throw images in a file and and like no, scroll my, through them or no my my everything is labeled everything is in separate folders i have you know i i have when it, it, it's funny when our when the designer for the when the book designer <laughs> asked me if i have any back matter to <laughs> I just I just provide him a link to Dropbox. It's like here, I've got everything. So, <laughs> awesome. Take your pick. <laughs> so, Tom, when you guys when you guys are working together on like specifically in this within this element, like the world building aspect of of Wrong Earth, like initially when it started, would like did. Tom was were your scripts real tight? Like were you or like are you were you throwing him a lot of details and, and trying to trying to guide Jamal or or did you just kind of throw out a loose idea and be like run with it? Like how I know no one's ever gonna be like, you know, it was my way or the highway and fuck you. Yeah, no. but, and I don't think either of you would be like that. No, but no, what absolutely. was the collaborative? What was like how how did you guys work together on 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 building this, well, this world? In the beginning, I like to I like to put enough detail in that it feels like I'm doing my job, but it's nothing you have to follow. Right. Okay. You know what I mean, but I'm not going to just leave you in a lurch and be lazy. But if you no, get a better well, idea, we can talk about it. Everything I need to know is in Tom's scripts, but Tom has always been, you know, super generous and super flexible, even like down to like, I mean, the initial conversations of like, what to do with Dragonfly and Dragonfly Man. Like Tom was always like super open to any ideas that I had. And, you know, any, anything that I pitched him, you know, like he he's just willing to listen, you know. And, you know well, I, I, I told an interviewer last week that um, the, the sheer amount of, that Jamal was able to improve this idea is something I will always find profoundly humiliating. <laughs> I I just want to live long enough 
<laughs> to, to get a Tom Pyre compliment on something. <laughs> the shit that he has said to like to Jamal tonight, like I, I mean, like they, it's moving me. Like call it like comparing it like comparing him to George, which I can't. I can't disagree. Like there, there is a. A, a, a very much alive and bombastic element like rooted in comic greatness that I see in your art. And you just, you just get, you just get humans <laughs> and good looking humans and humans wow. that wear capes. You just get it. Um, but that, that one that, that where he's like, like he makes me proud to be humiliated, but like, it's just like the shit one day, Tom, one day Blake. you're going to be like Blake. You Blake. impressed me. <laughs> I, I like your hat. <laughs> asking, asking, you shall receive, baby. All right. <laughs> All right. I told Tom in the green room I had a story, and I do okay. like. So, I've been doing Blake's buzz for just over two years. I've I've gotten very 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 lucky. Um, you know, like. It, it, I've gotten to talk to some really great people. I, I've worked with, with Hannah and David at, at, at right. super fan for a while. Um, do, do, do my own little promotion stuff. I've comics for the day job. Now I work at a production company and, and we oh. do Kickstarter stuff for people. Right. Uh, so yeah, cool. I just, I've, I've somehow I've sold my soul to like live and breathe this shit cool. and, and, and make it happen. But when it, when it all started, I, I started before even Blake's buzz. It was like, it started as Blake's buzz and comic reviews. Mm -hmm. And I used to just, I used to just do one tweet reviews on Twitter and found a nice community. Like many, many years ago. Um, none of my friends read comics in like real life, you know, like we, we like chiefs football, we get together for dinners and stuff, but no, I couldn't talk funny books with anybody. Right. And, and I found this community online and, and, got all these recommendations and and so i would just talk about books i read and for a long time people were like oh you should write reviews you should do a blog and i was like no i don't want to do that and then eventually so i launched i launched a blog right and right. so i started doing i i got i did a i did a written interview and i was real nervous about it and i was like you know and i still get nervous about written interviews over even like live streams like these it's i'm weird but uh so we I do this written interview and I, my last question is like, what's your favorite sandwich? And my idea is, is I'm going to do this Blake's buzz sandwich board and everybody I interview is going to tell me their favorite sandwich. And I'm going to put them on the sandwich board and like name the sandwich. It'll be like a restaurant, but for a website interview database. Right. And I was, I got, this, man, that's a great idea. So I, I do my, I do my first interview. Uh, second interview was uh, Michael Marizzi. And, mm -hmm. and, and he gives me an idea. Third interview is Tom over here. Right. And they, they send me penultimate penultimate. man. I always say I penult, penult I'm saying it right. Yeah. I always yeah, try to add another syllable to it. Um, but I, I read, I read penultimate man and, and I do a written interview with Tom and had tons of questions. Right. So like the, the questions about the comics were, were easy, you know, like, you know, how do you like, this is so you know, to the, the fallible superhero, the goofy superhero, but still like, like no, no when to get serious and when to make jokes and when to make commentary. It was very, very smart, very smart, uh, mini series. And so I ask him these questions and I, I end, I end with it. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, what's your, uh, what's your favorite sandwich? And Tom replies to this question as I fucking hate sandwiches. There are no perfect sandwiches because everybody wants to put fucking mayonnaise on a sandwich and mayonnaise is fucking gross. And I was like, well, the sandwich board was a good idea, but it's, there it goes. Glad to be of service. That was the last, that was the last <laughs> written interview I did for a very long time. And, it, and, and not, not, not because of that, Tom, it was just, I, I, I started podcasting. And then, and then like interviewed people like for real talking. And, and I was like, well, this is way better. It's more fun for me. Like, you know, I don't, maybe not for you guys, but for me, it's more fun. And so, uh, and so I started, I started doing podcasts and, and the live interviews and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I, uh, I've talked about that a, a couple of times, man. Cause it was, I love that comic. And I was so, I, I like, 
I had a sandwich board idea, man. I was like, I'm on to something. Oh, this will help me stick out. You were still on to something. I mean, <laughs> you should still ask that question. It's it's a great question. It's like the thing about mayonnaise, Blake, is that <laughs> Um, I want to know. I want to know. No, you put a quarter in the slot, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. The thing about mayonnaise is you, uh, everyone has some food that they hate and grosses them out. And it's something real likes. And people accept that about them, unless it's mayonnaise. If the thing (laughs) you hate is mayonnaise, they will, for the rest of their life, your life, they will try to force it on you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Oh man, I'm so, I, I didn't mean to make you relive all that, Tom. <laughs> Very dark place right now. Please. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks. But anyway, it was just it was just so it was so so funny because it and it was such a great answer too, right? Because it, so it was like right. I couldn't you couldn't even get mad and be like, really, Tom? Could you, could you throw me a fucking bone here, man? <laughs> it's just like a grilled cheese, something like no, but but it was I still like grilled cheese. I love those. Nice. See, so there are there are some good. But yeah, I was just uh. And it was funny because I was like, I do love mayonnaise. Like, <laughs> it was so. Uh, anyways, the 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 fun things that you stumble into in the in the comic book industry and, and podcasting and, and live streaming and stuff. So yeah, when when Hannah hit me up and and she was like, Hey, do like uh, they want to do like a five year ahoy anniversary there you know do you want to have tom on your show and i was like oh fuck yes do i want to have tom on my show i was like i'm finally gonna tell this dude this story and how how mega green blogger gets this response and just shatters my platform no i'm just kidding just blew your hair back to read yeah but now i don't have any hair i mean i got i got a beard but i don't have like it's that's it i went bald after that the the hat is nice well thank you uh (laughs) uh they're they're uh, less than ten dollars on on amazon right now you can you guys found them on a kaiju group and facebook mm. uh and i i got them because i i don't i don't know do you guys like you guys big monster nerds you guys like i'm Godzilla's? a little bit of a monster nerd yeah. I'm, a, I'm a middle and one i'm a middle and monster nerd i have a lot of uh ultraman oh okay. nice nice um oh. so monarch on apple tv is very good uh, oh, I, I, I got to, I got to do press for it. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I, I put out my review today, but like, I, I did, dude, I, this is crazy. Like I got to like, Apple sent me a link. Apple sent me a link. Yeah. Not, not like, yes. not like some yeah. website fucking Apple. And I got to watch the first eight episodes. Wow. And it was like, there was like an embargo deal. And uh, anyways, so, but like, I got to, uh, I got to do that. And so nice. I dropped my review today and, um, and I bought the, uh, yeah, I saw, I saw this hat. I was like, oh my God, I got, I got to have the Godzilla hat. Cause like that's, I've been, I like rewatched all the movies. I got, I'd recently got a PS5. And so I got the 4K uh, Godzilla set, yeah, recently right. watched all the new Godzilla movies and like getting all pumped for it, doing research and stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's very good. It's out today. And um, if everybody should love God. And I guess that new Godzilla minus one is phenomenal too. The new, yeah, I'm looking, um, looking forward to that. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen any Godzilla stuff. I haven't seen any Godzilla stuff. I did see Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, but that I mean it was okay. Um, I'm I'm more of a fan of Shin Godzilla. Shin, yeah, yeah. Great Shin, yeah. Did you see Shin so Ultraman? See Shin I have Ultraman. seen I have seen Shin Ultraman. I love yeah. I, I I still haven't seen uh, Shin Kamen Rider yet. Though. Me neither. I don't think any of us have it. Well, I mean, it. I mean, I think it's you floating could, around. It's floating I think, around. I think you could get it, but not officially, yeah. right? No, yeah. No. Okay. No. Well, you, no, you can get it on. I think you can rent it online. Oh, nice. At Amazon. Absolutely. So, yeah, I love those. I love those Shin movies. Like they're so weird. Uh, they're very weird, but they're very they're very beautiful and like gothic in their body horror kind of too. Like yeah. they, they, they have been anyway. Uh, the Shin Ultraman. Ultraman wasn't as gross. Like Shin Godzilla was like there was a lot of fluids and yeah metamorphosis and weird shit going on. You know, like that was a different that was a different animal. But I, I dug it. The question about Monarch is okay. Like, the one thing I care about is do monsters get enough screen time? Okay, and I I talked about this in my review, and I think I think initially that might turn some people off, but it, they the scenes you get with the monsters are very well done 
and okay. make make those moments even better. But I do think initially some people might be like, because I remember they got mad at the first Godzilla movie or the first Godzilla remake, uh, mm-hmm. the 2014 or 15 one. And they were like, it's all people and Godzilla doesn't show up till like 30 minutes into the movie or something. And so I could see people so with those minutes. same critiques. Right. Yeah, 30 minutes. Like, yeah, right. Like it's what's, uh, but um, like, what was it? Batman. Uh, what is it that the third Nolan Bat movie Batman didn't show up till like 45 minutes into the movie, you right. know? So it's like, yeah. depending on who does it and like, then, then we can attack structural decisions. Right. But yeah, so right. whatever, like Nolan does it. It's fine. Godzilla. No, like he has to be there the whole time. No excuses. <laughs> um, but there, we watched uh, the first Planet of the Apes movie from 1968. I guess. Oh, like the real one first my, one. One of my and favorites. One of my all time favorites. It, so like, 32 minutes in was the first day. Oh, wow. That's a, I I've seen some of those. I don't know if I've seen the original original, like I've seen some of the older ones. And then I remember, um, I remember the first remake with, uh, uh, he's got the burger place now. Mark Walton. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) yeah. The the Tim Burton, uh, planet of the Apes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I and then they're making now they're making another because the, then they remade it and they did the trilogy with Caesar right. right and right now they're making a fourth one and now Marvel's right. putting out comic books tied yeah. into all that too so yeah the, it's so it's so interesting these these big things that like won't die and I'm glad they won't but like it's like you know vampires and zombies and werewolves those won't die but also like giant lizards that come out of the ocean uh, <laughs> the King Kong like all these things and they like they keep remaking them and then as like technology advances they can make them better and better and bigger and stronger and faster and then i mean eventually we're just going to make them for real i still have a theory (laughs) that the gundams in japan are real and they're all going to come alive one day when like the aliens come down but that's we're not here to talk about those 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 things are fucking impressive I, did I you went see him to, when you were there i went yeah i went to odaiba oh. I, went to, I, I went to gundam base in odaiba and saw the saw the unicorn gundam when it was still wow. under construction so yeah it, it's it's the fact that they move now like I, yeah they I, I, move I, they, I, they're like smoke and light oh my god i know it's, crazy. It, it's fucking cool it, <laughs> They have a. I I didn't realize this till uh, on TikTok because I I recently rewatched uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah. And so you know I I talked about it a couple times online. So now my algorithm when I'm looking through videos, <laughs> it's like all anime <laughs> Neon Genesis. So you know like the computers figured me out now, right? Right. And uh, but there's there's a place like that for Neon Genesis in Japan too, and it's like it's like a facility. It's it has a big Eva, Eva Unit One, but right. it's not it's not fully realized and mobile or semi mobile as have like, like a Gundam safety Zark? net around the edge of the building for all the potential suicides. <laughs> no, I don't know. I didn't. Because <laughs> it's the saddest thing ever. Oh my god! <laughs> no you one's going gotten... to the Eva facility to be fucking happy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, Evangelion in itself is a very like there is a there is a like if it's Japanese, it's not gonna end well by any yeah, stretch of the right. <laughs> Happy endings are very rare in, ja- in Japanese storytelling. It does not usually end well. <laughs> Tom Tom, do you mess do you mess around with manga or anime or any of that? Not a whole lot, no. Okay. I'm pretty busy with Ultraman. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair that's fair uh i i re- like the within the last year i've i've gotten into manga and back into anime but like i very much more enjoy reading it than well i'd love watching it especially like like pluto i've watched a little bit of pluto and and recently just read pluto and like it blew my mind uh and, and like the new animation styles are, are very impressive but yeah it's uh it's 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 weird though guys i get really self-conscious I have like I've been reviewing comics and podcasting for you know like I said a couple year, few years now right right and and I've reviewed a lot of comics like solo just me like, you know like and and I'm on a lot of press lists and uh, and you know like I'm basically awesome I don't know if anybody's picking that up from what I'm dropping right now but no it, I I've re- I've reviewed a lot of comics and when I I get real like 
I get, I feel like a dumb white boy when I talk about manga, right? Like I'm like, right. I'm going to say something stupid and disrespect the community or they're just going to all think I'm dumb and laugh at me. Uh, and, and so it's weird. Like I want to, I would like to cover more of it and talk about more of it, but yeah, I just feel odd. About, like I love it and love experiencing it and reading more of it. And I'm still so new to it. It's like walking into a comic book shop after decades right. and not walking into a comic book shop, right? There's an unlimited right. amount of material. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, you're not qualified to talk about this. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can talk about you, anything. Right. Sorry, it could be ahead, that Tom. you love that that you that won't get ruined by attaching responsibility to it. Oh, dude, that's wow. All right, well, well, so how do you how do you guys combat that? Because because I can definitely tell that both of you very much love the wrong earth and everything that you're doing in it and every panel and and you you both of you just like work very well with each other and and there's a lot of chemistry and fun and excitement and and so how do you how do you avoid that how do you how do you keep it from feeling like a job and also make it feel like a job because you guys have deadlines and you got to get shit done and, and stuff like that too like how do you how do you play how do you how do you fight that that balance well it is uh, a job i don't mind yeah well i don't i don't i mean i don't know how to how to explain this um actually i do i do kind of so the thing with me is is i wouldn't do it if i didn't think it was fun i you know i i've got no problem walking away from something if i don't think if it's fun or if it's from if it's okay if it's not going to work i mean life's too short for that shit very true it honestly is i you know i you know it kind of it kind of goes back to the question you were asking me about you know whether or not i would go back to doing something for like dc or marvel or something i mean there, there's you know there's always conversations but you know i have to weigh whether or not i'm going to enjoy it again more than something that you know these are my boys they mean something to me they're important to me you know they're you know yeah i you know i i have I, I guess that that's kind of it. So it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, you know? nice. it feels it feels like work because I have to think. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. like thinking unless I. Yeah, okay, yeah you can't you can't turn it off and yes, zone out, right? Exactly. You got to stay focused. Exactly, exactly. So I have to, I have to think. I have to I have to plan. I have to you know, lay out these stories. I have to think about the environment. I have to think about the character, like the looks of the characters, how to keep everybody, how to juggle, you know, mm. all of these disparate versions of similar characters and have them be unique, but similar at the same time and have them, how, how do you have them have their own body language and their own energy, yeah. you know, and then couple that with composition and storytelling. And you know, just you know, you know, I I I put everything just artistically. Like I have a tendency to to just be a hundred percent. Like I don't know how to turn that switch off. Hmm. You know, I you know that's just how I was trained. I I think a lot of it is you know my own you know. My my work ethic is very much influenced by my mom. You know, okay. my my mom is a an overachiever. Wow. You know, she's a, a single mom raising two kids who eventually went on to become a college professor. Like, oh wow. You know, and then what she, she retired. Teach? Oh, she te- she was a career nurse. Like she taught nursing. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. So, so she was a, she was a nurse for most of my childhood. The hard, that's like, like the hardest thing ever. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, double you know double shifts for me. You know, trying to just you know take care of my my sister and my brother and I, and then you know going back to school like in her forties, getting her degree, wow. and then you know, and then becoming eventually a college professor. You know, teaching nursing. And then, you know, going to work for New York City for the health department through COVID, ultimately retiring. And then her retirement has been working as a school nurse. 
Wow. <laughs> so when are, when are you write when are you writing the comic book based on your mom? Like that's oh, what I, like it, that's... It, it, it it's coming. It's coming at some it's coming at some point. And you know when you make it, like you'll you'll be like the ever winning family member ever. Like no one will ever be able to take that from you. Like every holiday, every Christmas, yeah. anything, anything you all ever celebrate, like Jamal will be like <laughs> It'll be like on the mantle, like a CGC graded copy oh, yeah. of it, maybe like oh, you know, yeah. like framed and with a spotlight on it that the family has to look at. But I mean, that's 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 inspirational. Like that's yeah. that's beautiful. That's so cool. But yeah, it's it's true. You know, and I get my work out. I absolutely get my work ethic from her. And I think that because I think it's it's coupled. You know, I you know I got corrupted by the wrong artists you know with, you know at the right time like i was coming up in the 80s so okay. it was you know steve rude and frank miller and dave stevens and al williamson and, yeah. you know and brian bolland and jose luis garcia lopez and, you know i i got into high school just as you know dark knight returns and watchmen were coming out so yeah. you know so that was the stuff that really like influenced me. And then you had, you know, George on Avengers and you had Jerry Ordway on Fantastic Four and Superman and, you know, just, yeah. So, so, you know, as an artist, we're always, you know, we're kind of always chasing that dragon. We're trying to, you know, in some ways emulate the people that we're influenced by, you know, in some, in other ways, you know, trying, you know, egotistically to improve on you know on certain things and then you know you're competing with yourself constantly i'm constantly competing with myself who wins you know, <laughs> there is no there is no winner in that competition like, they're, they're really it, it, it's it's a ongoing battle between you know having a massive ego and just being one of the most insecure people on the planet. Just it, it's, there's no winning. I'm, I'm glad there's a little bit of struggle in there. I did not just, just because I just, I really do think you're, you're very, very talented. Jamal. Thank you. And, and like, and you, you just get, you really do get superheroes. Like there's, when, when, when Tom mentioned earlier about like, like you and George, and it's just when you go through history and you writers too, but like very much artists, you know, like there's a lot of beautiful comic art out there, right. but, but some of it like stands above. Right. And it's just like, when you can harness those special moments of like, when to make this more than human being, like look more than human and right. when to make him look just human enough. And right. when to make him like look more human than you, the reader. Those mm -hmm. are like three big moments that, depending on what they're going through, like you have to cycle through, like panel to panel sometimes. Right. And you do you do that. Uh, I, I you do that well, and and I think that's one of the reasons why Wrong Earth is you know has 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 been around, stayed around, and and will continue going around. I really hope. Like I. Right. I hope I hope you guys got so many more stories in your back pocket. Like honestly, like it's just you guys both of both of you like just kind of get what the genre needs. Uh, and I don't I don't I don't want to like I always do this. I always worry like you're like like did someone pay this guy to kiss our ass? Like no no no. I, no. Like, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. From, 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 I, I I accept it from the place that is being given. So I absolutely appreciate it. I I think. You know, for me, you know, just I think one of the things for me that just works visually is, you know, there's a there's a humanity, particularly to the way that I that I try to draw Dragonfly Man and Stinger and Stinger One. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Rich and Chip. Uh, you know, a lot of it is definitely influenced from like spending my childhood looking at you know old episodes of batman 66 or you know looking at the the, the captain marvel serial from the 1940s or you know the old blackhawk serials or you know stumble you know very early on stumbling on like an episode of captain nice you know <laughs> you know just like that that's that kind of like you know with with dragonfly man there's he's still like 
muscular and heroic, but not in the same way that Dragonfly is. Like Dragonfly is very modern and very cut, and you know, you know, I you know, stealing a little bit from like you know Jim Lee and a little bit from Greg Capullo to kind of like give him more of that like that defined look in comparison to you know the the you know dragonfly man and stingers costumes which are they're baggy in parts there's folds there's seat i i purposely like draw yeah. folds and seams and you know there there are times when like the the cowl bunches up underneath his his jaw and it makes him look a little bit chubbier than he should be you know? yeah but that that adds depending on the moment it adds a, a level of pathos and humanity to him. Holy yeah. shit, you are blowing my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think about this you shit. You are a lot. blowing <laughs> my mind right because like I... oh my god, because it's it's so interesting because you know when 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 a cape is drawn, those mm -hmm. imperfections, those wrinkles, right. you know, like yeah, it's blowing in the wind. It's it's moving. It's not just static anymore. It's this entity. It's this entity that exists beyond the page, right? But for their actual outfits, uh, it 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 defines musk. It defines muscle and figure well, like yeah. that. Well, and, you, you know, know. But the other the other thing is like if you want to talk from like a design standpoint. So with Dragonfly Man. So when I was designing. Dragonfly Man and Dragonfly. Like one of the things that Tom had actually asked me about when I pitched the design was Dragonfly Man's cape, which is this clear kind of gossamer, very wispy sort of like you know plastic like thing. And he was just like, "Well, why didn't you make it like a solid color like Dragonfly's cape?" And I just I wanted it. It just felt like it would add to the brevity of that type of character. Wow. Like I want, you know, they're, they're insect theme heroes. If you're an insect theme heroes, of course you're going to want insect wings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks, it's a great effect. It looks <laughs> terrific. I was just admiring it. Yeah, it is. I think it just, it, it really helps drive the contrast between the two especially i think between that and then with the color scheme like it's a very simple palette but just turning up the saturation on one and turning down the saturation on one on the other just does so much to separate well, them i'll tell you a secret you know about the wrong yeah. earth about dragonfly and dragonfly man this is an earth alpha which is the code approved uh mm -hmm. Um, nobody can tell the difference between the two costumes. Oh, I figured I figured that out a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I no, no one can figure out Superman when he puts glasses on. He can like he can still have the fucking suit on, but he puts glasses on, and they're like, it's not Halloween, Clark. <laughs> you know why that disguise works for Superman? The reason that disguise works, and it clearly works is because he's chosen to live among journalists mm -hmm. who are the only people who are professionally trained to accept what you tell them. <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's, that's awesome. Uh, what is, uh, no, yeah, so... If, if anybody can't tell, like we've uh, the stuff we've talked about, the wrong earth. If you if you haven't got to experience it, it's very much worth experiencing. It's uh, it's 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 very unique and it, and it's fun. It's a little quirky. It's a little humorous, but it it's also uh, it's also a commentary on like the the current ongoings of superhero comics. Yeah, like, mm. I mean, it, it really is. It it definitely has something to say on top of a great story to tell, which is another reason why. I think it continues to succeed and, and make headlines and, and, you know, continue to, uh, you know, new, new, new and adjacent releases. But we, if this wasn't just a wrong earth special. And so I do want to shout out just some other stuff that Ahoy has coming or is out already just so that everybody knows. Cause even though these guys are like King shit, top dog, epic comic book makers. Yeah. And that's, that was the legit title that they sent me in the press release. That's quote unquote. 
but they 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 work they they work at a, at a company that also is putting out some really top dog king shit other stuff uh as we, we mentioned captain ginger we talked mm-hmm. we talked about that one of one of the founding ahoy members uh still stuart still moore. working on that title stuart moore uh with art by june bregman and Roy Richards. yeah it's a great comic and it's uh it's cats on a starship basically Humor with like think. but like and but very serious like That's serious pretty, pretty heavy heavy like burdensome sci-fi and and i mean burdensome in like the emotional weight it carries not burdensome to read or experience but it's i mean it's heavy it's it's heavy almost soul crushing sci-fi like how it should be and it's great it's beautiful yeah it's it it, has that but it also has humor in it because um these they be they're humanoid cats but they behave like cats yeah and behave like cats and yeah really funny um so we're doing um for the anniversary, we did a, a, a two-issue, or well, we're doing a two-issue Wrong Earth special that leads into the next series, which will start in March. Mm-hmm. And um, two issues of uh, Captain Ginger to sort of wrap up threads that the other series left, and it's and wrap them up beautifully. I love this comic. It's you guys gonna you guys gonna relaunch that too? Is that like saying we'll see? We'll see. Okay. And um, we're doing a one-shot of more modern stuff for us, which is, we have these two uh, comics, My Bad by mm-hmm. yeah. Mark Russell, Mark Russell and Bryce Angman, which is a very broad and funny superhero spoof. Peter Krause draws it. And uh, we have Billionaire Island, which is another Mark Russell project, which is a mm-hmm. satire of, of uh, money <laughs> and um, uh, too much of it. But so uh, there's a character in My Bad called Acid Chimp who's a chimp who's very cheerful and what he loves more than anything and he thinks it's so funny is to splash you with corrosive acid and he's like kind of addicted to this practice but he doesn't see any reason to change and um this business dog in billionaire island is the world's wealthiest being (laughs) and um his decisions about which dog food bowl to eat out of. <laughs> the bowls will be marked like buy or sell or hold. And whatever he chooses to eat out of, that's what the economy does. He's the most powerful being in the world as well. Is that out? Is that one shot out already or is it coming? So the, the one shot we're doing, it'll be out in January. It's okay. Or I think January, yeah. And uh, it's called Acid Chimp versus Business Dog. It's, it's the aptly animal, titled it's the animal team up that no one has been waiting for but it's great <laughs> i but it's gonna blow everybody's mind so mark has been on the show a couple times and the last time he was on i made a joke and he didn't he didn't get it initially and i was like i was like mark what can you address the rumors because he had like three three or four titles out like simultaneously from Ahoy. It was a lot. Like it was like a lot of Mark Russell and like in the same week too, it was like all these Mark Russell titles. Never dropped. enough. Never enough. Yeah. No, never. Like the world needs more Mark Russell all the time. Uh, but I like, he had all these Ahoy titles out and, uh, and it was him and Richard Pace on the show that we were talking about uh, a second coming. And I, I asked, I asked Mark, I was like, I was like, Mark, you want to address the rumors that they're thinking of changing the, uh, the name to Mark Russell's Ahoy comics. He (laughs) he was like, he was like, Oh, they're, they're not doing that. And I was was like, no, I'm sorry. It was a joke. (laughs) He was like, he was like, what? No, that's not happening. It's not the worst idea. I, uh, (laughs) uh, I want to mention one more comic that's coming out nowadays. Okay. It's sort of loosely part of the, uh, well, it is part of the fifth anniversary celebration, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But it's an anthology uh, that was put together by Sarah Litt, our senior editor, and it's, she did such a great job. She's really shepherded it through, and it was her idea. And it's called Project Cryptid. Yeah. Yeah. Two stories per month dealing with, um, you know, monsters that some people think are real. And uh, really entertaining. Great. Mark Russell's another one who's in there. And, um, Paul Cornell and Paul Constant. It's, it's a really, really nice book. And um, threading through that and all of our comics right now is a project Stuart Moore put together called um, Partially 
Naked King, the Corpse, and it's a 13-part text story, each chapter written by a different mm -hmm. person. So they try to like paint each other into a corner with cliffhangers, but the story is so surreal and out there and wonderful that. And who'd you start with? Like who? <laughs> the first, the first chapter uh, was written by Grant Morrison. Insane. I think he's going to have a great career ahead of him. <laughs> and um, uh, we got, and he just he brought us this beautiful gift, and uh, um, uh, and it, it just continues every month, and it it wraps up in uh, the second Cap and Ginger. Yeah, who's Alex? Alex Segura just did the newest. Alex Segura, yeah, Carol Lay, Keck W, um, just a lot of great people, a lot of great stuff. How did because you guys do those prose editions at the at the end, like you do short stories yep. and cool stuff like that. You ever you ever think about doing like a uh like a bound collection of them, like as a, as like a like a prose collection, or is that or is that are you guys trying to keep that a reason to like? This is this is for the people who pick up the single issues, and this is a special thing for you. Yeah, they add value to the comic. I think they had some. You can buy a comic, and if, if you buy one of our comics, it might last your whole lunch hour, like one issue, because we got we have prose in the back as well as the comic. Yeah, and um, uh, I don't know if we are the best people to publish a prose book. I don't know if we okay. be, if if we would be great at selling that. But uh, there's a lot of we've we've definitely published a lot of wonderful stories that I love. It would be nice to see them. But it's you know when you decide what you're going to publish, you have to figure out if if you're the right person, company to do it. Mm. Do you really you know how to do this? You know? I got you, J Jamal. What do you, what do you think about all that? Are are you like there's not even that many pictures? I don't know why we do this at the end of our comic. <laughs> No, I always thought it was like one of the more unique things that I'd ever seen really I done do, in yeah. comics. And I think it's been, I think, and this just goes along with Ahoy as a company in general. I think that the stories that they choose are top notch. The people that they decide to work with the pro stories are top notch. I mean, you'll launch with a short story by Grant Morrison. I mean, you know, that, that yeah. says a lot about the direction that you're, that you're going with your, I, right. I wouldn't be like, keep that out of the back of my yeah. comic book. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I but wanted I, to I, say Blake Morgan and that's it on the cover. <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but that, yeah, I just, I've always thought that was, and, and that's been a, has that, so I, 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 like I said, I, I came late to the party for second coming, but has that always been a thing for Ahoy? Did you guys always have like the, the pros bonuses and, yeah. and little extra tidbits at the end of every issue? Yep. Cool, dude. I like that. I think, yeah. I think more people should do that. Like encourage, encourage people to pick up that single issue, right? Like, I mean, yeah, well, we, we, there's, um, there's two things we did. We were kicking around for things to do when we were starting the company and, we looked at a lot of old comics just to see if anything popped out at us. And there's two things that we stole from old comic books. And one is to have a prose story because mm -hmm. they always, in the, in the 40s and 50s, they always had a text story in there because they needed text in there to get um, uh, uh, better postal rates. The post office would recognize them as a magazine if they had text in there. And, and, uh, okay. So, and that's why we have letter pages. You know, so. Oh, but um, but they didn't think of that, and so they would always just pay some writer a sickly small amount of money to write a story as fast as he can. <laughs> and so we would sort of looking at those, and we're like, "What if these were good?" You know. <laughs> and the and the other thing we stole from old comics is there's this um, company in the '60s named Gold Key. Yeah, they had like you know. Um, they came back re like last year, didn't yeah, they? they? Like they did. And I don't know if they're doing this, but in the sixties they would well they had really nice painted covers, which nobody had back then. And they also would um reprint the cover on the back of the book without the logo and without the blurb and without the price and all that stuff. And you mm. could just see the art. And so we wow. took that from them. We do that. Nice. Yeah, because that that's uh 
in my day job, we charge extra for that shit. You want that virgin <laughs> cover, you're paying for it, baby. We'll give you we'll give you some card stock. Like we'll give you a little bit extra, a little bit of extra girth on the comic, right? But you're you're fucking paying for it. Uh right. no, that's 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 cool. Um there's a, there's a lot of really cool things that that Ahoy does, uh, both to to stand out in in the in the indie world and also just to so I say thank you to their audience and and show that you guys are appreciative that people are are picking up these books, which is which is funny to me, not funny but like cool to me because I I feel like the content says enough on its own. Like you right. guys are you guys are putting out the sauce, you know. Like I would not, you know, you you guys are you guys are in the kitchen making it, you know. And if 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 like someone invited me to that dinner table, I would not. I'd be fucking stoked, right? And and so you know you guys are you guys are doing it right and on and on top of that just putting in a little bit of extra effort, actually a lot of bit of extra. There's there's editing and writing and a lot of pro and prose formatting and and little illustrations in the back. There's it's not just a little extra effort. It's a lot of extra effort. May uh, I say? So, may I say? Yeah. We have page numbers. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Dude, no. <laughs> I don't know how people talk about comics that don't have page numbers. You know, I mean, you, how do you, I mean, you can read an Ohio comic and go, I love what happened in page 13, panel nine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anybody else's. It's hard, dude. I was, so I, I was, I'm a grad school dropout and I was a creative writing major. Uh, and, and there are going to be fans of Blake's buzz are going to laugh. Cause I've tried, I used to bring it up all the time, especially when I had like creators on, you know, I'd be like, well, I was, I was in a MFA program, you know, like, and not just to just be like, you know, I'm one of you, but I'm not right. I'm like, I was tried to be, but, but, uh, uh, it, it, long story short, uh, I wrote a grad paper on Captain America and like, I'd found truth, like the Captain America truth. Uh, and I'd right. never heard about it. And then, and I, I wrote about Captain America and, and I found truth. And I, I wrote this paper about like how, like, this is supposed to be like this big symbol and this big movement, you know, especially with like, you know, like the anti-Nazi propaganda and stuff. But I was like, it's funny. Cause like all these years, like it's been, a, it's been a white male as captain America. And then, and then when, when people want to like switch that up, it, 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 it turns bad. Right. And it's like, that's not, you know, like, how does that say diversity? How does that say we're all together? Anyways, I wrote this paper about it and I'm like pulling issues and omnibuses. And I read like the Ed Brubaker run and truth and, and, and like Rick Remender's run. Cause Rick Remender led into a uh, Falcon cap, you know, and right. that's, that's where the idea kind of spawned from. And yeah, so I'm, I'm making my bibliography for my fucking term paper and there's no page numbers. Anywhere. <laughs> and I'm having, I'm having to like deep dive into fucking MLA citation fucking nerd right. how to shit to learn how to cite sources that don't have page numbers. And basically like, basically it, it, it told me to pretend that it wasn't an omnibus and treat everything like a single issue and manually count the pages. But anyways, you're like, you're talking a, a 17 page paper. Um, I waited till the last fucking minute to do this. Right. Cause that's who I am as a person and a college student. And yeah. so, and then trying to do this bibliography, like the night, that's the last thing you do, right? You write this right. deal. Everything's good. You're like, okay, it reads good. I'll do my bibliography now. And then you, and then you get hit with this, like, oh, there's no, there's no page numbers anywhere. What do I do? Oh my God. That's and awesome. so I was up all night trying to figure out how to solve that. Well, all you scholars listen, if you do yeah. Dragonfly, man, you're not going to have that problem. Nope. It's going to be ready and sourceable and absolutely. And and provide you a lot of a lot of inspiration and, and good topics to talk about uh, on on top of that, um, guys. It's I. This has been really fun. Also, also I just I want to apologize to the chat. I have totally ignored our commenters this whole time because I've been I've been I've been wrapped up. But but thank you, Ronan, for for tuning in. Thank you, Comics by the Bay, for tuning in. Uh, Son, Sons of Mjolnir, Buzz Buzz Baby, uh, great channel. Check them out. They do awesome interviews. Uh, my co-host Cole showed up. Thanks for dropping that link, Pierre. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, this well, th thank you, dude. I, I appreciate it. Uh, still, still shouting me out, even though I didn't ignore all your comments for an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> but guys, the reason I ignored it is because this was a very, very cool conversation for me. And I always remind people, and I'm I'm a very, very lucky nerd 
And I've found myself in this position to get to pick the minds of people that are standing above and, and doing great things in their industry. And, and both of you are doing that. And it was a, it was a goddamn pleasure to talk to both of you. I, I laughed. I learned. Uh, I felt. And, and what, what, what more can you ask for from a comic book podcast, right? Like this, <laughs> this is true. This is very, very true. No but, it, but it is it is friday and, I, and i've kept you for a while real quick guys uh like where's the um the best place to keep track of you if, if like if you guys have a newsletter or website or something to shout out now now's the time uh Jamal, there, is where, an Ahoy where com- there is an ahoy comics newsletter there is it's good too you should subscribe to yeah, it it's a really good newsletter and it's um uh, on the letter page of all our comics there's an address to su- subscribe yeah it's it's easy to find. Well, what about you guys personally though? Like Jamal, do you have do you have a newsletter or website? I don't or? have I, I do have a website, it's jamalagle.com. Um okay. I don't have a newsletter because Lord knows I don't have any more free time. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we have uh Com- okay, comicsahoy.com. And, and then Tom, I'm on I'm Tom Pyre on both uh Blue Sky and, and Horrible Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I I'm noticed- still I'm still on X and I'm on blue sky. I'm on spoutable as well. And threads. Yeah. I'm hedging my bets. Somebody has got to win. Yeah. <laughs> no, threads is, I, I was actually done with threads for a while just because it, it like, it, it just gets exhausted. Like our, our five minute before show Mark tonight, like I, mm-hmm. I posted like five minutes till we're live on like six different platforms. And that, that's, that's my, I mean, that's my life. It's fine. I signed up for it, but it's just for, I gave up on threads for a second, but then I found right. out that the comic book community is like holding on to threads for dear life for some reason. Yeah. Like really? everyone said no like idea. blue sky was the answer, but like there's a really solid comic book community on threads too. Uh, like, well, I think the problem with Blue healthier... Sky right, I think the problem with Blue Sky right now is it doesn't have all of the functionality that the other the, yeah. the other platforms have. Um, but it's also still in the beta; it hasn't opened itself up to the public yet. So the yeah. moment I feel like the moment that it does finally open up, it'll be bigger. Yeah. yeah, it'll be bigger. Because it's funny because I for a while I remember when it launched and all of us were like, "I want to fucking code." Like, what do I got to do for a code? Like you know, I'll get naked. I'll take pictures of my feet, whatever. Like, and it was like, and, then <laughs> I, and, and now like, I, I remember when I got, I got, I, I got a code fairly early and I was like, okay, cool. But now I have, so I have like a couple blue sky accounts for like work and clients. Right. And I probably have 20 codes that I've yeah, been yeah, trying to right. give out. Yeah. I've and, and like, everybody's like, we're on there. Like we're, okay. we don't need codes anymore. Like, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it is, it's, it's a, it, it's not populated like that other yeah. website is that's going that's weird. gonna take time though it'll take time but it, it is a it is a good that and threads is like a a nice a nice welcoming comic book community yeah where if you if you come in and and, and act like a real person and not an asshole you will be treated as such uh, you know agreed. like so you know because some places when you come in and act like an asshole you get rewarded which is fucked too but that yeah we're not doing that over on threads and blue sky but no like <laughs> the, the water's the water's warm and there's there's great people to interact with and it's they're nice little comic book communities and i know i know i know x is hard for some people because it's uh, there's a lot of negativity and it's easy mm-hmm. to get wrapped up in some bullshit but anyways you yeah know. if you guys need a code i'll Please, like I want to get rid of these goddamn things. No, it, uh, but yeah, like you can follow, follow, follow Jamal. Keep keep track of him. Uh, he makes really cool pictures. He's a really cool dude too. Um, very big supporter of any comics. Not afraid to voice an opinion when or it needs two, to be voiced. Or five. And I, yeah, <laughs> but I, I I appreciate that about you, dude. Um, oh, thanks, man. Because it, it's especially now, man. It's I I've I've fallen guilty to that. Like it's like. Do I, do I say something or don't say something? And, and I've said something and gotten in trouble for saying stuff. And I've, right. I've you know, and so it's just like, you know, and, and, um, I'm sure you think about those things, but you, you just are, you, you're, you'll, you'll, you'll fight for the, for your, your cohorts, right? Your, your, peers. Oh, no, absolutely. And I appreciate I, that I, about you. It, it, it had, you know, you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, I don't want anybody to think that I think I'm better than anybody else or anything like that. It's just, yeah. you know, I, I grew up, you know, in a household that, you know, 
people spoke their mind and they 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 let you know what their thoughts were and they if they saw you know it, 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 and part of it is you know you know coming from a family filled with clergy you know it, it it's you know you 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 stand up yeah you know when you need to stand up and you stand up and you be counted and you 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 defend those who cannot defend themselves yep. nice so. Man, you're just fucking inspiring me, Jamal. Like, <laughs> oh, like shit, man. This has, been, this has been the this has been the Jamal Power Hour. This has been the li- li- <laughs> they told they 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 told me Jamal was having a rough time. We had to get him on and lift him up. And Tom Tom uh, spent all day writing these these fancy you know <laughs> statements. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> You 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 work hard for it, bud. You you really do. Uh, like every that that effort I see on the page, I see it how you interact with with fans and peers and and other people, and and so like the medium's lucky to have you. And and Tom, same same to you, man. Even though thank you, man. Even though you'll sometimes just really throw a kid for a loop when he's trying to do a written interview, you're yes. still a really good guy. No. <laughs> a kid. It was I'm two not, years I'm ago. Not. I was fucking thirty five. Like. <laughs> <laughs> No, I get, but no, both both of you are, are your comics are better for having you. You're making really great stuff. I, again, the Wrong Earth is a really great comic. Ahoy is a really great publisher. You guys are, would be you're foolish not to follow them and keep track of what they they got going on. And they got some great trades that you can pick up anywhere right now and get caught up in these series and see what they're about. Um, you you can it's it's all there uh you know mark russell uh a, a big name in the industry does a lot of cool stuff for these guys too uh and and they're they're not stopping they're 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 i feel like they're actually just getting started like this this five this five years is a is a is a momentous achievement but i also feel like a lot of them are laughing at it because they're like you know 20 years from now when we're looking at this this <laughs> fucking blake guy that we did this five-year <laughs> anniversary show you know now and now now we're now we're on Apple Hollow TV in a hologram and everybody's <laughs> living. I don't know I don't know what the fuck is gonna be, but um, but no, I, it was it was a privilege to get to talk to you both, and and it, uh, I I really like what you guys are doing. Hoy's always been super kind to me as press, uh, very very appreciative and and like helpful when I when I've worked with him before. Um, you know, other than that whole sandwich deal that that debacle, but you know <laughs> we'll get over it eventually. Uh, <laughs> not tonight. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but follow follow these guys follow ahoy keep, keep track of everybody um you know cheers 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 to five more years and five beyond that and just just keep making these comics guys like the the, the not just the industry the fucking world needs you they need these they need oh, these thanks, stories man. and these distractions thank you and 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 fucking and that orange maggot in prison needs your hair i oh. i really want I, I send hey, him, absolutely send him those send him those fucking locks tom <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it all right well guys again this is so amazing everybody who tuned in tonight thank you for spending your friday nights with us uh if, if i have five more years no. <laughs> five more years five more yep. years <laughs> years um remember to love more hate less read comics that's not just a thing that we say we believe it on this channel and um and, and yeah guys unless you got anything else left to say i'm i'll i'll, I'll play the music and, and set you free thanks i'm good it all right it was fun well, awesome I'm glad, I'm glad you guys had a good time everybody have a wonderful weekend uh we'll be back uh actually sunday sunday night we got the invader book club uh tuesday night yeah, two, two, we'll be back Tuesday night with uh, Nightmare Theater 3D. And I probably got a whole bunch of other shows next week, too, because you guys don't let me fucking sleep. But that's fine, because I love it. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much.